peace and love among all beings of the universe. Let there be peace, let there be peace. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Namaskar. Mm -hmm. Guard or guard? Guard. When I came here to see you and the followers around you, it followed my heart. I did not expect anything right from the beginning. I received so much just being in your presence. I thank you, Papaji, and thank you for the satsang family which opened my heart. In the night afterwards, I had a dream in which I heard me asking again how to speak with God. You wrote last time also how to speak with God and I told you how to speak with God. Did you forget it? It is very easy, easiest of all to speak to God because to speak to anyone else, you need some other person, some other object to speak to. So that speaking is termed as indirect. But to speak directly to God, you can, you need not bring any object or any person in between you and God. First of all, you have to find out who is the speaker, who speaks. Then later on we will see the spoken, who speaks. You have to investigate, it is not the tongue which is inert or made of flesh. It is not the tongue, it must be something behind the tongue that speaks through the tongue. And what could be behind the tongue, you can say mind. Even the mind suggests some kind of object to speak to, some subject, some person to speak to, therefore the tongue speaks. And who is beyond the mind? Who suggests the mind you dictate something to speak through the tongue to some other person? Who could be beyond that mind? And I told you, if you reach there, it is you who is speaking to God and it is God itself who is listening to you. That is the answer of your question. Find out who wants to speak and to whom it wants to speak. You arrive at that place which is neither within nor without. Word cannot describe it. 
So you have got to understand. It happened that in this dream, a wise man looked into my eyes and said, I speak to you so many times, but you do not listen at all. <laughs> so wise man speaks to you, but nobody will understand what one speaks. It's enough to stay with a wise man. And what he speaks, it will directly enter somewhere and the word will become manifestation of the meaning of the word. It will directly manifest. When I woke up, something had absolutely changed. Papaji, would you like that please give me a new name which will suit my understanding and I thank you very much. Okay, I give you the name which will answer all questions. And for that sake, you have to buy one scripture. From the Satsang Bhavan, I hope they have the books called Yoga Vashishti. You have some yes. books? So you buy this book and read. So I will give you the name of the same author who is speaking to God himself. And God speaks through his mouth to God himself. And it will clarify your doubts. You have to go through this book and while returning to your country, you read to your parents, your friends, your neighbors, your countrymen. Everybody will be benefited.
Joseph. Dear Papaji, I have been away to over one month uh, one month down in Pune because I was having some work done on my teeth and Pune is the only place where you find good dentists <laughs> and now I am back and and my teeth are very sharp and <laughs> well set. Yeah. Yeah. I have heard that in Pune, in the commune, in, in the Buddha Hall, there are many dentists to sharpen your teeth. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> That's why I went. Uh, and they don't use any implements also. They don't do anything. They sharpen your teeth with their cheeks. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Many people who have bad teeth, they go to... <laughs> to Pune, and you can see everybody who comes from Pune, uh, what uh, um, bright and sharp teeth they have. <laughs> and not only the men, it is for the men that I, I have seen, they sharpen their teeth and, and the cheeks become Red, rosy cheeks, and all the girls in Pune, you can just see from right, left, and behind. <laughs> they have rosy cheeks. So, so, you have not only sharp on the teeth, but the girls are also very happy without any vitamins. <laughs> They have shining faces. So that is the attraction that has brought from all corners of the world, both girls and boys, just to sharpen the teeth and have rosy cheeks. And you can look around. So it is good that you have written because why to spend money in the local dentist, you see this, and then suffer pain also. So without pain, happiness, with great pleasure, you get new set of teeth again. <laughs> and Beloved Papaji, Ramakrishna has been, this is Vedant. Ramakrishna has been quoted as saying, everything we see, we hear, we touch, we smell, and we feel during uh, common awareness is nothing but the Supreme Mother, our divine creativity at play. Therefore, what I understand from Ramakrishna's words is our very sense experience is already pure, pure worship, and there is no harm then in chewing pan, <laughs> or eating fish, or having smoke, 
are having drinks and rubbing the body with another woman's body are tasting the sweet experience of conjugal delight of the lips of each other what will <laughs> What will one achieve by renouncing simple, legitimate sexual players? So this is the quotation of Ramakrishna. <laughs> Even Vivekananda did not understand this. <laughs> He never married. <laughs> he never married because his guru said, once upon a time when Vivekananda used to come, he was the only son of his parents. And then he was coming to ashram, Ramakrishna ashram in Belur, in Calcutta, he was late and then Ramakrishna liked this young boy very much. He was very intelligent and also graduated from the university and his parents wanted to let him have some job and earn money for them, but he went always to see Ramakrishna. He became very much attached to Ramakrishna and also Ramakrishna was attached to this young boy. One day he was late. She asked him, why are you late? This morning, as everybody comes here and somebody is late and they ask him, why you did not come yesterday? Do I, don't I ask? He ask everybody. I know everyone who is not coming. And some say, I, I found a new girl boy, girlfriend, so I forgot to come to satsang. But look at the answer of this boy, Vivekananda, whose name was Narendra. And Ramakrishna used to call him as Narin, Narin. Why you are late this morning, he said. On the way, Rani Rasmasi Devi, Rani Rasmati Devi, in whose temple Ramakrishna was working and she was the owner of that property. So she, stopped him because Ramakrishna had a very good voice and he used to sing very good bhajans. So she asked me, requested, you sing a couple of bhajans to me because I am not going, I have some work, I could not go there to Ramakrishna ashram. So you sing me. So she asked me, so I sang one bhajan, then she said another one. And she was very happy about it. For that reason, I am late. Please pardon. He said, why did you sing bhajan to her? Never sing bhajan to a young woman. And he said, she is thrice my age. She is three times more older than me. I am 19 and she is around 60 year old. He said, doesn't matter. Woman is a woman. There's no question of young woman 
and old woman. Woman is a woman. Don't look at any woman. Even she may be older, may be around 80s, also you don't trust that woman. And thereafter, Vivekananda had never seen the face of any woman, though he traveled in states. And so listening to this story, I am very happy about Vedant, how he has drawn the meaning of the advice of Ramakrishna. And now, leaving one girl, he is after one Russian girl. <laughs> So one Dutch test he had. So now a Russian test he wants to have. And she showed me a combined letter with you and her. Yes. So I advise her, you don't trust Veda. <laughs> I, I can tell you another proposition to solve this problem. There is one travel agent from Kathmandu, and you ask Santosh, he will introduce to you, and I will also speak to him. I spoke to that man, Mr. Singh, travel agent Kathmandu. I told him, you have to help this girl because she has to stay here. But she was, she was here on a Russian passport, but actually she belonged to Ukraine. So Ukraine is now a separate state. So therefore, Russian passport is not valid. So local FRO, foreign registration officer, she said, you have to go back to your country. And she told me, if I go back, they will not allow me to come back because all this Ukrainian government has now no embassy yet in India. So they are withdrawing their subjects and they will not allow me to come. Therefore, I am speaking to her to go to Kathmandu I have spoken to this travel agent. He will try his level best to have continued your Russian passport. So he promised me, and if she is here, I will ask when she is going. And, and for marriage, as you said, that she is my sister on political reasons I want to marry her, but you will not use use her. <laughs> as, as a wife, and you have been very honest with that, and she also is very honest that she will not allow you. <laughs> no. no. And now, <laughs> because, because for the last 21 years, he has uh, never tasted a man, as far as I know. <laughs> Living in Pune, she has not, no connection, I have never heard, because I got her history. 21 years history, staying in commune, nobody could go near her. <laughs> is it? Is it correct? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, when are you going? Papa, I have to make passport extensions. He cannot do it before because. 
I have to make passport extension, he said. Yeah. Without this, he cannot do you it. You can do it. You can have extend it as a Russian it's passport. It's not possible. Huh? It's not possible. It's not possible, she says. It's not possible. Russia doesn't exist any longer. Hmm? Russia doesn't <laughs> exist any longer. <laughs> Soviet Union, the Soviet Union, they don't, don't make extension anymore. They don't do, they don't do extension. They don't want, country does not exist, it's Soviet Union. I will find something. Then there's no other way except to marry with them. <laughs> there are two possibilities. I will try both. Huh? <laughs> He is a reliable man. So if, if you marry him, you can get an English passport. And with the English passport, she can stay here. With English passport. She can stay. She cannot go to England with it. Hmm? It doesn't mean that she can live in England. It just means she can travel around using an English passport. I can stay here. I don't want to. Okay, then. <laughs> but then you must have a marriage certificate, no? To show that. Uh, uh, we can. Other day, we cooked up a marriage, you know, other day. Keeping one candle here and then. <laughs> and like that marriage, and then everybody will sign. This marriage has been performed <laughs> like we did with this, you know, with one beautiful young man and a beautiful girl. Is later, I, I forgot his country because that country now doesn't exist. <laughs> You know it, no? What I mean? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you have a private conference of <laughs> <laughs> Narayan Das. For many, many years I have been doing a lot of to prove myself and to offer what I am looking for. Seeing the futility of it, I am at the point of dropping, dropping and doing and sinking into the bliss of being. <laughs> how, how did you get at this beautiful experience so soon? I don't know. Eh? I don't know. Huh. That? Who knows? Then? Huh? Huh? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? You do not know. I don't know. I don't know who knows. Huh? But surely you dropped, uh, you dropped into the bliss, as you write. <laughs> And where was the dropper? Where was the dropper? Dropper, you do not know the doctor. <laughs> it's a dropper drop me. No, no, the doctors use to put <laughs> uh, some one or two drops fall into some part of the body, it is called dropper. Yeah. That's what I have learned from my <laughs> So whenever we use the word dropper immediately, I take out the dropper because there are many droppers I have. Each time I use only one dropper on one person. Yeah. And that 
in the table, you see, some girl left me many droppers. <laughs> she was an English, English woman. So he dropped bliss of being. But if I do not do any activity, and if I do not move from time to time during the day, I feel tired and I feel bored. But this is what is against what you have written above. If you drop in the bliss, how can you have tired? In sensual bliss, you get tired. That uh, is the experience of everybody. Everybody gets fatigued and then get tired and then is not able to get up again. <laughs> But when you drop into in, in, you drop into the bliss, then you don't get tired and you don't get bored also. Isn't it Swami? It is correct, no? Yeah, you see. How to be doing and not getting tired and not to lose, lose anything? Question mark. So do I have to let doing happen through me? Ah, this is correct. This is a good experience. You let doing happen by itself. Let it happen or not happen. This is not your problem. Do you follow? Yes. Let it happen or let it not happen. Even if in contact with other persons, with other objects, let them happen on you, but you remain silent as if nothing is being done to you. You will never get tired and you will never get bored. It is the other object, it will get tired and bored because they do not know, because they have not dropped into the bliss. Therefore, whatever happens, let it happen. Let it come what comes. Let it go what goes. And you try this always, and you will never get bored, and you will be completely, totally happy. So if something leaves, don't worry. Then something comes, don't be happy. So you have to understand this now. Being here with you, I feel how important it is to find myself so I don't get caught in the ups and downs of life. So it is very good you make a decision. I will not let down yourself. Let it happen or not happen. You keep content. Keep yourself contented. Rani. Rani is from Israel? No. Huh? Oh, this one. 
I would like to ask you about the different qualities of the heart. What do you mean by different qualities of the heart? Different qualities could be of the mind and not, not of the heart. Heart is only one quality to be always happy. It could be mind because in English language they make always mistake to call mind for the heart. My mind is happy. No, mind cannot be happy. So which is your country? America. Huh? America. Americans, uh, they don't make such mistake. <laughs> if it could be German, I could believe. <laughs> Hard. It appears that my heart uh, perceives through at the same time that it uh, perceives something, it is affected by what I perceive. So in the heart there is no perception and no notion. Heart is just purity itself, another name of divine heart. All of this happens um, mutually and spontaneously and without a doer. Another quality my heart seems to have is the quietness and peacefulness where it want effects where isn't affected by anything. It feels like the mind is covering over my heart. This is correct. The mind is covering over the heart. Mind is full of desires. Another name of the mind is desiring something. So when you desire something, the heart is closed like the cloud covers the sun. A small patch of cloud covers the sun. It covers my heart to protect me from, from feeling the expo the awareness of exposure and player of feeling a fully experiencing the life can speak to me about this Rani. I've spoken to you when you have a desire of any object in your mind, you are covering the happiness. And you can try now, just for a second, not for a long time, just for a second, a couple of seconds, you don't have any kind of desire to have or to renounce. Just for one second. And tell me, what do you feel? No desire at all of having or not having. Hmm. It seems impossible. Huh? It seems impossible. 
seems impossible. I have not told you to lift a weight of 100 pounds on your head. I tell you, drop everything. If you have no burden on your head and you say it is not possible, what does it mean? You have not heard. I will again repeat. Don't let your mind touch anything of the past or future just for one second. So what is the impossibility in this? Just for one second, you have not to think. It seems to happen for one second. Hmm? It seems to happen for one second, but then my mind comes in and desires. It seems to happen for one second, but then the mind comes in and desires. I am not asking for then or before. You speak to me during this second, <laughs> which I tell you. During this second, which is not thinking of the previous second and the future second, in between future, in between the past, in this second, you speak to me. Again, you are thinking. Tell me what is in front of you during this second, which is not the past and not the future. And future and past you have to think about. Therefore, if there is no future and no past in between, there are three seconds, the previous, the next, and in between. So you speak to me of the second in between, the past and the future. You say you are American, and I am speaking American English. Huh? I have had a lot of experiences of what you speak. Ah. But it's, as I sit here now, I'm not experiencing that. You, whatever you experience, you cannot experience without another person. So it seems during this second you are also utilizing your body for some other body. Experience must take two bodies to meet together. That is called experience. Again, you have missed my point. Any experience must be a past experience. And what I want to ask you is instant experience of just now. You are thinking to find out some answer. What answer you can find out? To see your own eyes. Do you ask someone how to see my own eyes? This is instant experience. You will not ask, please tell me where is my eye? You know very well where your eye is. Instantly you will know, you need not ask. Of any other part of your body, you will not ask where this particular part of my body is. Directly your finger will go in. <laughs> you will not go to any person because you will be shy about it because you know very well all the private parts, such like uh, up and down, 
and you will not ask this man, which is this part. Will she ask you about the particular part? <laughs> no, no, you see. <laughs> He is impartial man, therefore again and again I ask him. <laughs> impartial because nobody knows him. <laughs> so what to do with you now? <laughs> You don't understand, you say English, but then after the satsang, I, <laughs> I give you one, one, one person's name, you speak to her and she will explain you because she has this experience. Okay, you write the name of that girl who explains to everybody after satsang. Okay. You, after this, you see this, this woman and have satsang with her. Mm. You can give the name, you know, you know the name, no? Yes. She knows the name. <laughs> she will give you the name of one woman who has <laughs> who has realized this second, in this second, what should be done. And she very generous, very compassionate. <laughs> and she will give you the name. And you do not know that girl. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a name because she told me, do not give advertisement of my name otherwise. <laughs> She will have not time to come to satsang. So, I've so, spent some time with her. I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Nani. Huh? Nani? <laughs> Queen. Rani means queen. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I should have given this to this woman, look at this. This is called looking into presence. Uh, I give it to Rani, he's cut this, cut it out. It's beautiful, no? Uh, Rani, will you please come again? Yeah. <laughs> Now, even the name which I have suggested, you did not go because this came afterwards. Now you tell me where this man is looking. A snake is crawling around his neck. But look, look at the eyes, where he is looking. At least this you can speak if you're, you can't speak about your eyes, you tell me where it is he is looking. Looking inward. Huh? Looking inward. Ah, that's what I meant. 
you look inward inward for one second and then again tell me what do you see when you look inward you can see this man so keep it in front of you and try to do as he is doing <coughs> such a long letter Beloved Bhagwan I thank you for being the world's most biggest left luggage office I thank you for the silent answers of the questions in my last letter to you when I first spoke to you about this book mountain path and you suggested that we could write a beyond the mountain path how true it was so now the manuscript for the mountain path has been deposited in that self same left luggage office Uh, that is the true meaning which i meant mountain path any path will leave you any beginning has an end therefore after going taking up this path you may reach the mount everest and now beyond everest you cannot go because there is nothing so this path becomes a limited path so what i wanted to tell you was follow a path which has no beginning and no end and you have rightly understood as far as the second question about the house it will work itself but as it should and this applies to the third question as well why carry the load of my on my head when i can set it down and let the train carry it this is a good lesson here that's what i think which is your country America so it's an american idiom but i have heard it the from english english proverb they say the fools build a house and wise live in and david will tell you the meaning what does it mean because i have only heard from my english professor the fools build the house and wise live in in india we call it it's a, it's a wisdom to build a house and because you have not to pay rent <laughs> <laughs> so how how you verify this proverb don't take on any unnecessary jobs or work huh Don't take on any unnecessary jobs or work. They just give you a headache. Mm. Don't take on any unnecessary job. Mm. It will take give you a headache. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it means the wise should not live in the head. <laughs> <laughs> And let somebody build the head and the wise man will live in somebody's head
Now we understand the meaning after 85 years. <laughs> and why to carry this burden on my shoulders? I do have one more question for today. When I am talking to someone about the truth, I see. This I don't follow. When you are talking to someone about the truth, I don't understand this language. Will you please again explain to me why should you speak to someone about the truth? And if you, like Vedant, he plays good guitar, and let him take this guitar in front and plays before the pig, will that pig appreciate? Good guitarist he is, and his guitar also is very costly. But pig, will it appreciate or wave the tail? <laughs> it will be still engaged in the garbage. Therefore, do not speak about the truth to a person who is engaged in picking up the garbage. Never waste your time. So the truth you must speak to truth itself. Truth must be speak, spoken to truth itself because truth will understand the truth. Then you don't need whether someone listen to you or not. You can try it. Let the truth speak to the truth. And then, next I will not yet read, but I am commenting line by line. When I am talking about the truth, when it is coming through very clear, clearly, so my body reacts very strongly. This is another line. So what you are speaking and what I am telling is the same thing. This is the result of speaking to the truth, and these are the external symptoms. When you speak to truth, these are the external symptoms which you describe very clearly. The body reacts very strongly, and the heart beating very fast and loud. and the body shakes with energy. Because when you are speaking about the truth to the truth, then you need some drums to be played. People play music. So heart is the nearest music for, for this truth who is watching, means breathing. It becomes very fast because it enjoys. When someone is dancing, it is different to one who is just sitting and looking at the dancing girl. But how fast is the dancing girl? Like this enjoyment of the heart, it starts beating. Because it enjoys for the first time a good dance of speaking to truth. And my body shakes. This is also true. 
your body will shake and the hair will stand at end. That also you must have felt, but you are going to write. Isn't it? Uh, all hair will stand and they will not sleep. Uh. <laughs> yes, yes. He has experiences, therefore I, I confirm from him. <laughs> and you are also stands. I stand sometimes. <laughs> it feels very similar to the body sensations of anger or fear. It's like the feeling when I sit in front of you or when I write a letter to you, I have this experience. Why? What? Is that? Is Abhishek. not to separate myself from my... So this is uh, the last experience. So after having all this experience, air standing and enjoyment, uh, so this is the end of uh, your experience. I don't want to separate from my wife. <laughs> and would you please kindly bestow upon among me a name from your heart so that I keep up my wife <laughs> and without her I cannot keep this name even. So your name is Ram, and huh? <laughs> uh, so I cannot change this name. Ram means God Himself. And once you repeat the name of Ram once in your life is is quite enough to liberate you. How can I change this name? So I cannot. And, and you know, the name of his wife was Sita. That also I cannot change. Ram and Sita means one name. This union is one. And what is the trouble with, uh, with the Sita? Sometimes this Sita was kidnapped by another man. Is it the case with you? <laughs> no. <laughs> but the Ram I speak about, his wife was kidnapped for some time because women are, are not very powerful so this man was very powerful and cheated her, comes, comes as a beggar and asks her for the food. The lady was very generous. So when she was putting some food into the begging bowl, it was not a begging bowl, he was not a beggar, he was the king of a golden country. So lifted and took it away in the absence of her husband. 
So this name cannot be changed. Forcefully, the woman can be abducted, but she never allowed the kidnapper to touch her body. It was fire. So she remained untouched and again united with her husband, and they don't separate. So if there is any misunderstanding, if someone has kidnapped and you have to forcefully bring her back, <laughs> because there are many Ramanas also <laughs> who are more forceful, the poor woman has to submit. Woman has no strength. After all, they are women, they have to submit. Man. <laughs> Isn't it? <true? laughs> huh? He said, he said like this. Atma Priya. Dear Papaji, I thank you very much. Could it really be you and I are like conspirators? What is the meaning of conspirator? Conspirator in English, I have just heard, if I make some conspiracy to kidnap you. Huh? Cons conspiracy, some scheming to kidnap a woman, like I said uh, last, uh, just now, he conspired to kidnap a woman, he became a beggar and went for arms and immediately she tried to put some arms into the begging bowl, he pulled the woman and put it on the chariot. So that meaning so far I have heard about conspiracy. I lay something at your feet. I do or read something and unfailingly through source extract reference of yours in in satsang you offer me your precious answer even without asking as if we we uh, we share a secret, eh? as if we are sharing our secret between us without speaking. In fact, I am seeing you for the first time. For the first time I see you. And I have not seen you before. 
how can you ask so many uh, about me, so many mischievous things, you say? <laughs> And you are a master thief. I have never seen so clever thieves like you. I ask you to, to, to burn something. I ask you to burn something and instead you just snatched, snatched it away. I may pull and tug, tug a little, uh, tug a little, tug a little, but I, I, But I know I don't have a chance. Neither do I want any chance. But perhaps you are just uh, moving in for the first, first kill. Fabulous is the path of love. He alone who surrenders his head has the right to free it, to tread on it. Only if you serve your head, swell your head, and lay it at his feet. Papaji, now I am a little worried as I can still feel it in my head that is uh, sitting, uh, that are sitting on my shoulders. Uh, I also know you are the most compassionate lord of death. If I am to have a head, will you let it be yours forthwith? And only you are and be of service as the heart already is. My, uh, my uh, hand may wa waver and you might not like the mess at your feet. Will you please guide me through? I have no, I have so much to thank you for already. I am in love and respect always your uh, Atma Priya. So Atma Priya, first of all, I am in love with this name. Means beloved of the divine. You gave it to me, Papa. Eh? You gave it to me. I gave it to you in dream? <laughs> Last year. Eh? Last year. Eh? Last year. Last year. That's why you can write this letter. <laughs> so this, that's what Kabir said. Swear your head, keep it on the palm of the hand, and if the master accepts it, you are the luckiest person in the world. Action. 
that I, I tell you the story. Once, since you, you must have heard the name of Saint Kabir, and many people used to listen to his satsang. And then they also invited him to go to their village and give satsang, and this man will not reject. He will immediately go. And she ha he had a daughter by name Kamali, and she was eight years old. And she complains that our father has no time to speak to us, to love us. He is always speaking with people, three, four hundred people join early in the morning, and he is always speaking to them, and I have no time. So, next morning, what she did, she was very mischievous, very naughty girl. She stood at the gate, and, and she said, My father has said, a man who wants to come to attend the satsang, first he will have interview. Therefore, I have kept a log of wood here, and I have a very sharp chopper, and which is very sharp. I am sharpening day and night. So, you lie down here, and I will chop your head, and present it before my father, and if he accepts, you will be invited. So this was the mischief of an eight-year-old girl. And you know what the people said? First group came in morning 4 a.m. And they asked, she asked, first of all, lie down here. I will chop your heads, show it to my daddy. If he approves, you will go in. And they said, no, no. The thing for coming tonight is that we are arranging a wedding of our daughter, and the boy's party has come and waiting in, the, in our house. So immediately we came to have blessing so that we go through this matrimonial alliance. But we have no time. Now, therefore, we salute this, and we receive the blessing from outside itself. This party goes away. Another party comes that about 20, 25 people, they had a court case, and today it will be decided by the magistrate. And she asked the same problem. Lie down, I will cut your head, and you would be invited. No, no, we came for this. We wanted blessing of the saint so that we win the case. And everybody came like this. And that day, Kabir was waiting and nobody came for satsang. Who will offer this, accept this offer? So he thought something is going on. So he saw his own daughter stood at the gate and sharpening the knife. And he didn't understand. He said, what are you doing? He said, look, didn't I tell you that you're wasting time? There was some question about asking, speaking about the truth, and they don't understand just now, somebody asked. And you have no time to speak to us. And today I said like this, and nobody entered for the satsang. Therefore, you are only wasting your time. 
why don't you stay in the house? Our mother is there, but you have no time to speak to us. So this is the case. People go and listen to past time. And you must go like this, you are not to cut the head outside. It is just a test. She was not going to chop off the head. She is, after all, the daughter of Kabir. She must be compassionate. Just to try. And second story is also like this about Socrates. You must have heard the name of Socrates. He also was a foolish man, but he is known very wisest man of Greece. And he also had no time to sleep with his wife. And she was very angry. You know that the women are angry if you don't... Uh, <laughs> And some people will come and speak about satsang. He will speak all night. He has not time to go upstairs to sleep with his wife. And if you don't sleep with the wife, you can just imagine uh, how fire she could become. Not only on the husband, but on those also who were sitting with him, his friends. So one day she was very excited. All night he didn't come and she said, I have no vegetables. Take this money and the basket and bring vegetables. He goes out of the house. And then some people came and he started speaking with them. And you know, Two, three hours have passed. She is waiting for the vegetables to cook. And he still has not gone out of the house, didn't go to the market. She got very angry and she was standing on the balcony and started abusing not only her husband, but all those people directly. You rascals have done some other words. <laughs> I sent my husband for vegetables and you have got engaged. Engaged him. So she was uh, speaking, but he didn't care. Socrates didn't care for this. Because it was such a nice satsang, such a nice talk. How can you look after anything else? It is, it is very sweet to speak about the truth and to particularly those as aspirants who really need some help. You forget time, you forget everything. And he didn't move. He didn't hear the shout. So after she did, she filled a bucket of water and poured on everybody from the balcony, on everybody, a bucket of water. So everybody got drenched. And now he looks up, you see. And you know what? After our Socrates is Socrates. <laughs> he said, Rain after thunder. <laughs> that finishes it. Th First she was abusing, and now she poured water. So after thunder it rains. That's all. So how a wise man can deal with every situation? <laughs> No, no, don't laugh, I will show you. <laughs> Look right. And 90 degrees behind. 90 degrees behind. 90 degrees behind. 
90, this 45. No, don't disturb it. Because a man who is listening from the heart, you see, he will open his mouth and snore. to read your letter <coughs> and so Argentina, yes. Argentina, Argentina. The same face as we have uh, Shanti, Argentina. You know her? Uh, same face. So therefore. <laughs> uh, all Argentina. Ah, uh, see. Uh, see. You told me that one of your boyfriends will be coming from Argentina. Same, same boy. Huh? Yes, he already informed me last month. So many times I see that I would like to finish with my little world, my world of desires, of ego, of mind. But to finish with all this illusion, where is the strength and courage? <coughs> is it up to me? Does it depend on my personal effort, personal power? If so, I can tell you that I see my favor. First of all, you must not accept your defeat and your weakness and everything is possible with the strength of the body and strength of the mind. I have got to do this thing today, now. 
But if your mind is weak and you accept your failure, you are not going to be successful. You have to close your fist and rise on the toes and declare, I have got to do this tonight. That strength you must have. Otherwise, you can't win this game. So many times I see that I repeat old habits that I don't want to anymore. So if you want to get rid of the old habit, you have to decide, I have finished with old habits. And if you are deciding you are weak, you cannot be successful in getting rid of old habits. I want to trace the thoughts of their source and it is as if I cannot do it. I want to do self-inquiry which I cannot do either. This is not true. So I tell you, perhaps you only want to repeat it to do by repetition. It's not going to happen. You have to do it by force. How? I will just tell you. I want to trace the thought at the source and it is as if I cannot do it at all. I fail my attempt. I can't, I can't do either. First of all, you don't understand what does it mean to arrive at the source of the thought. So I tell you what you have got to do to trace the source of the thought. Now, you think of something just now, not in the form of any question, as the river is flowing to the ocean and you want to go to the source, what you have got to do? To go upward and not downward flow of the river. Then go on going, then you will arrive from where this source of the river is. Like this a thought comes. Let any thought comes, you follow the source upward, backward from where this thought comes from. For instance, you are thinking something, any thought. You follow this thought and go at the source from where it comes from. Tell me any thought, then I can explain further. Eating. Hmm? Eating. 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 Okay. The thought of eating comes. The eating is available in the restaurant. You have got to go there. Yet, eating, you are hungry. But unless you go to restaurant, it will not help. You have to go to the restaurant and then order according to the menu. You read the menu, the waiter will give you the menu, then you order. He will bring food and then you eat. Okay, now this thought of eating came. Now you are not in the restaurant. If you are in the restaurant, this thought will not come because food is in front of you. So this eating thought has come. Go back from where this thought, eating, has arisen. From where this thought? From nothing. Huh? From nothing. What? 
From nothing. From nothing, okay. So now you have arrived at nothing. The source is nothing. And now in nothingness, is there any thought of eating? No. So eating is gone. And restaurant also is gone for the time being. Minos and waiters are also gone. Now nothingness, you are in now nothingness. Then will you speak something? What do you see about nothingness? Look around and see how do you like nothingness when there's no thought of eating? What do you taste in nothingness? Hmm? Nothing. Nothing. And when there's no eating and only nothingness, why did you smile? <laughs> you smiled. Still smiling. And showing teeth also. Why? Why this happiness? Why? Why you are happy in nothingness? No thoughts. Eh? No thoughts. No thought. So in no thought, you are happy. And if you know this secret, you can enjoy everything and everything will come in front of you. In emptiness, whole world is situated in emptiness, in nothingness, only happiness. And by eating, say you have eaten all the menu you have ordered, up to ice cream, last item. And after six hours, you need a latrine. <laughs> Isn't it? Why to go to latrine, first of all? Why to go to such restaurant that you have to go? And something will happen, you have to go to doctor even. You will complain stomachache, and some will complain diarrhea, and some jaria, and so many things. Why to have that trouble? Why not? The king is sitting on the chair. Does he go to restaurant to eat? The king sitting on his chair in the court, having a crown. Does he go to restaurant? Does he grow the vegetables? No. At the proper time, the food will come. And when it is night, the coins will come. <laughs> you only said that you are the king. And just do, I can't use my hand <laughs> today. Just clap like that. Yeah. In front of you, some servant is there. He will understand without asking. Now the king wants something to eat. Everything will come. If you surrender to God, everything is possible. And service to the teacher. And if I have time, I can tell you a very small story. If, uh, if you are not uh, hungry or eating, <laughs> small story I can tell you. You are not hungry now, no? I can tell the story. Yes. You are not hungry. Yes, please. Okay, that's very good. <laughs> Somebody is leaving for the tray? <laughs> okay. Mm. Ah, see? <laughs> I was 
I was having some trouble with the throat and I was not able to speak. Not able to speak because story about the king, you know, about the king, I tell you things happen by itself. There was a king and uh, he had some paralysis of the legs or you call it arthritis with which he could not move himself. So. Somebody used to come to massage his legs. Like there is one, there's some, some girl here, she gives very good massage to the legs like this thing. In the mornings, he must come and then give a hot shower to the king. This was his work. Only this man you must come, massage, bath, and shave. He was called royal hairdresser and massager. <laughs> so at seven he must be there. One day what happened? He was going to the palace of the king and his teacher just stepped in. His own teacher of this barber came. He was going to the palace. It was already 6.30, half an hour earlier he started to go. His teacher comes, what to do? So he did not tell to his teacher that he has got an appointment. The teacher comes, he forgot. Took the teacher inside, gave him good massage and took, gave him good shower and then after that lunch and asked his teacher, now you take rest. Finish his duties, finish. Now that appointment he is not met. And what he said, now I am late. His time is already 12. I am five hours late. Now the king will be very angry. He will swear my head and kill me. So if he sends some soldiers, <clears throat> my guru will be displeased. And my guru will not be happy to know this. So he himself offered to go to the king and ask pardon and give the reason why he was late. When he entered, the sentinels at the gate, soldiers at the gate, looked and laughed at him. So he suspected something. The soldiers are looking at, at this man. So he thought something is happened. So he went on going. The king was sitting on the chair and seeing this hairdresser, he rose up and prostrated before the, this barber. 
He said, the king can do anything, but he said, sir, don't disgrace me in this way. Don't insult me. You can do whatever you like. You can hang me or cut off my throat. Then king did, doesn't understand. He said, I was looking after you, but you had gone away. Today's massage you have done so well that my paralysis, my arthritis is disappeared. That's how I came, walking, and I must prostrate before you. Still, this barber doesn't understand the story. And then he explained <coughs> that it was due to your massage that my arthritis, which I was carrying for the last 40 years, is over. This now this man understood the miracle of the service of the teacher. So he said, from tomorrow I am not coming. So his teacher had to do this work. And he didn't go. This barber doesn't go now to the court. The king himself. to his house and prostrated about the teacher. This is the result of serving a teacher.